selection. Good evening and welcome to MU Cable's weather segment brought to you by the Campus Weather Service Forecast. I am Dan Zipper and with me tonight is my friend Kevin Carroll. Hi. And on this fine Thursday, November the 14th, 1996, we are going to recap the past week's weather as well as we're going to take a glimpse into the future and see what the weather is going to be like for this weekend. Uh, climatologically speaking, this past week has been a rather chilly week, and we have uh, appropriately titled this a chilly week. Uh, I first want to point out the normal temperatures for this time are 54 and 34, and this week we had a hard time getting out of the 40s. Sunday through, Sunday through Tuesday, the highest we could gather was 40 degrees, and it even got a little bit chillier Wednesday and Thursday, where we only got 39 and 38. The lows followed much the same pattern with very, very unseasonably chilly air. This is typically the kind of air that we expect to see in late December and early January, where low temperatures drop all the way down into the lower to mid-20s, where we should be sitting right around 34. So, just to recap that one thought, this has been a very chilly week, and this is the kind of air that we can expect to see in through the weekend. Right now, though, uh, the current conditions that we should see, we should be looking at a high of 38, a low of 26, Normals for this time of the year are 53 and 33. Records are 75 at 1993 and a low of 18 and 83. And we did see a few flurries in the area today, giving us a trace of precip. Sunrise was at 6.53 a.m., so I did indeed miss sunrise. Right now, outside our door, though, uh, we're looking at mostly cloudy conditions. We're lit right now, outside our door, we and think it's about 32 32? degrees. I think it's yeah. about 32. It's crazy now. Mostly cloudy. Temperature at 32 with a dew point of 14, giving us a relative humidity of 47%. The winds are fairly light, north northwest at 6 miles an hour, and the barometer is 30.56 inches of mercury and rising. And that is a very high level of mercury for this time and of year. That is a very high level. And that, that is supporting the uh, cold temperatures we have. And it's been a really changeable pattern since the last time we were on TV when temperatures were in the 70s and we were talking unseasonably warm. This is kind of bad weather for the uh, colds and the flus, uh, a lot of people getting sick. And I wore and, shorts. Yeah, and that, that's really not helping matters anymore, but it might be time to get the genes out. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the satellite map for the uh, lower 48 contiguous United States. And the first thing that jumps out, is out, at the, out at you is the clouds over the southeast. And that is a tropical system that we may have to watch for some kind of development in the near future. You can also see the uh, band of clouds moving through our region. That was with an upper level disturbance that did spawn a few snow flurries in the region and even some accumulating snow down across Maryland and parts of northern Virginia and West Virginia. And the other thing that we also notice is another developing storm out over the Midwest. And we do have uh, winter storm watches and winter weather advisories for the Dakotas parts of Minnesota, and even a freezing drizzle advisory for the Denver metropolitan area. But you can see that in between the systems, we do have a slice of clear skies, and that's going to be the dominant weather producer for the next few days. Dan will get to that in a second with the forecast. So now if we can look at the radar, we see that there is precipitation under those clouds. Uh, we have some lake effect snows over northwestern Pennsylvania and western New York. And along the front, some stationary, along a stationary front, we have some precipitation in Tennessee, and a little bit even out in the west. But that storm really hasn't gotten developed yet. It's going to take a few days for that to occur. And as we look at the surface, we find a stationary front along the southern tier of the United States. That's separating some very mild temperatures down in Florida and Texas from the cold polar chilly temperatures that we're experiencing here in the great north. And you can also see the next storm system is back over the mountain region, the Rocky Mountain area. So now we will take a look at a temperature map of the United States. And we can see, if we look at that, that it's quite chilly across our region. Temperatures in the northeast are in the 30s and even some 20s just to our north. And if you want warm weather, uh, it looks like Phoenix is getting up to about the 80 or maybe 90 degree mark. I'm not sure which that is, but it's somewhere between 80 and 90, and that would be a good place to uh, go right about now if you're getting sick of the cold and the chill. And now, this is a uh, map that I thought was pretty interesting to look at, and uh, you agreed with me, so we decided, we decided to put it on the air tonight, and it's the wind field along the United States, and you can see if you look up into Canada, 
there is an area of dark purple, and that's representing very light winds with our strong high pressure over southern Canada. And that's going to be moving into the region, and with the light winds and clear skies, this is conducive to some very cold temperatures. And in fact, uh, tomorrow night, we'll have the coldest air of the season, and we could get into the upper teens. And cold. that's pretty cold. cold. So we'll take a look now at the jet stream map. We saw that for a peak there earlier. You can see a retreating jet streak over the northeast, and that's responsible for some thermally direct accelerations of the wind and uh, some ageostrophic divergence aloft. And that is combining with the subtropical jet stream you see there over <coughs> South Florida to produce a big storm. And in fact, there is going to be a big storm out over the ocean. And if it had been 100 miles further west, we'd have Mr. Snow Shovel out right, right about now. And I think a lot of people are generally happy that that is out yeah, 100 I, miles east. I, I have to say I'm one of them. I, I really don't, I don't like deep snow in uh, November. I think Phoenix, was, Phoenix looked pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never been there, but I'd but like I to go I someday. I don't think we're going to be seeing any of that kind of weather anytime soon. No, I don't believe so. Uh, now you're going to take a look at the uh, forecast for us? We'll take a look at the forecast and see what we can come up with. Okay, Dan. But it looks like we're generally going to stay in the very chilly air mass. Uh, we're caught right in a slice of nice, as my uh, partner said earlier. We have precipitation out to our east and a strong developing storm system out to the west, which is going to bring lots of snow, sleet, rain, and just about any kind of precip you can think about uh, out to the North Dakota, South Dakota, and just generally out all the way through the Great Plains. But looking at Saturday, uh, the high pressure is not going to move all that much, which is going to keep us with generally clear skies and basically still chilly conditioning chilly conditions, temperatures are going to moderate slightly through the period, but uh, the key word in this forecast is just going to be that it's going to be a rather chilly weekend. Yeah, it is going to be quite chilly, but I was looking at some of the longer range models, and we, there is some hope that uh, maybe we could, in fact, get a warm-up for uh, the middle of next week, in fact, maybe upper 50s. Uh, that would sure feel nice after this uh, cold spell we've had here recently. That would be very nice. You might, you might even be able to wear the shorts again. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> So we're going to sum up everything in the form of a forecast, and if we can get a take a look, and if we can get a look at the forecast, we're going to see that for tonight, it's going to be becoming clear and cold, low temperature of 24. For Friday, we're going to see mostly sunny skies. It'll be sunny and chilly. Uh, high temperatures are going to get up not quite to 40. We're looking at a high of 39. Friday night, we're going to say clear and very cold. We could see some record low temperatures, and we're going to call it a low of about 18. For Saturday, it's going to be mostly sunny and a bit warmer. High temperatures should reach the 40s, and we're going to pin it at 43. For Sunday, and we're actually, we're just going to jump to an outlook here. We're going to give Sunday <coughs> a partly sunny and milder day. We're going to get to a 50, which we haven't seen for a while. And for Monday, we're going to throw an outside chance of showers. But then again, Kevin, when's the last time you heard of showers inside? Well, this morning before I went to class, I took a shower inside, but that's a different story. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Well, um, we were going to throw up a little trivia question for you tonight, but uh, I just, uh, on a spur of the moment, happened to think of a, a better one, so I guess we didn't get it on the screen, but I thought I'd stump our crew with it tonight since I kind of alluded you to uh, what it was. And uh, tonight we're going to ask the uh, production staff what the hail capital of the United States is. And Les still looks like he has the answer back there. Good old Les from uh, Elkton, Maryland, the director tonight. What's your answer, Les? Uh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Didn't you guess that once before? <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma City. No, actually, it turns out to be. Oh, uh, we have Boulder as another guest Boulder? from uh, Randy Oling. Is that how you say your last name? From Pittsburgh. I was going to say Topeka, Kansas. Topeka. <laughs> well, that's, uh, in fact, incorrect. It is uh, <laughs> Cheyenne, Wyoming. Oh, we're close. The great state of Wyoming, and that was courtesy of Barry Walton. He uh, stumped me with that question, so that's how I came up with it. All right. So, do now... You, do you have a few words to say about our fundraiser that we're yeah, I do trying to close twister. up here? Yeah, we're selling twister calendars. Come on down to Roddy 134 and get your twister calendar. Yeah, next year, you want to uh, have a tornado every month, and this twister calendar can feature that, and maybe a picture or two of Helen Hunt as well. Also, we are selling t-shirts and mugs, and the sale goes on until November the 18th. So stop at Roddy 134 for details and hurry up. You only have another week to do that. 
Now, I believe you want to talk about the uh, well, first, service. Well, first, we're going to say this might be our last show we ever do here at Millersville. That's a sad moment. It's only our fourth, too. I know. Well, it's, it's been a good start for this program. Yeah, and uh, maybe in 10 years, we'll be making lots of money doing this. Yeah, but for maybe, right now, we're paying lots of money to do it. It's all worth it. It's good experience. All right, we want to remind everyone that our uh, forecasts are complements of the Campus Weather Service forecast. You can reach us and get an up-to-the-minute forecast just about any time of the day by simply calling extension 3692. And with that, for Kevin Carroll, I'm Dan Zipper, and we're going to call this show over. Good night. Good night. in the theater. It was so awesome. The direction, when he pulled the mask over his face, it was scary.